Hi everybody, it's Jackie schomburg Uh Today's video is all about what to do when you get stuck, especially if you're stuck with no idea what to do next. So I have been looking through tons of old paintings that I have never framed or done anything with and found some to put in my shop, which will be opening soon. I'm not exactly sure when, but stay tuned. Uh, finally, I will open it. But I found some also that I had abandoned long ago. They were parts of other, you know, other series that never quite came together. And I took them for this video and went pretty dramatic. <laughs> I just basically annihilated what was once there and made room for something new. So I hope you will enjoy this video and I hope it inspires you to never give up on a painting and just to give yourself something to react to. All right, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments. I will see you guys soon, bye. Hi everybody. This video is for anyone who has felt stuck and given up on their art uh, at one point or another. These are nine paintings that I had started at one point and then abandoned. I was looking through my drawer the other day, I'm getting ready to open my shop online and I found these and thought, e, I can do better. So let me revisit these. And I wanted to take some bold action because it just needed something. It needed a whole big something. So, so I decided to attack these by adding black. And I wanted to use this video to show you what a huge impact adding black can have on partially done work, slightly or completely abandoned work, and how to do it in such a way that it makes sense with what you already have and finding ways to move forward. I'm using some color shaper tools. This is a very small, I'm not sure what these small ones are called, if they're still called color shapers, but it's a silicone tipped pseudo paintbrush. So I'm using these to pull back the black paint. I am using golden open paints for this because they stay wet longer. So I'm able to take my time, make some decisions, decide what marks I wanna make into these into these areas of paint and then I can decide what I would like to do. So I'm using that same silicone tip tool again just to make those little, I don't know what to call those, just not lines, right? They're just little nuggets. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> look like little bitty tater tot impressions. Um, this is a new catalyst wedge that I have. It has little, it looks like little saw teeth on it. And it just makes some nice stripes, very thin. And if you don't like it, you just do what I do and you add some more paint. You can see how wet these paints still are. It's very glossy. I'm using that same tool going sideways. You need to be careful because when you have this much wet paint, when you're in the middle of other things, you will get it all over your hands if you're anything like me. And it may or may not continue to spread. These are from a failed video that I made where the video actually stopped recording very soon into the beginning, but I made the thing anyway. So here I'm taking those little paintings and adding some black to them because they don't have a whole lot of contrast. And it's helping me lift some paint off of these three paintings that I'm working on. So it's a win-win. I'm using a, a pit pen plastic container to scratch some shapes in. I'm just lifting it off now with some paper. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, it's just to vary the textures that are on these sheets, even though I have lots of black. The second reason is I can lift some paint so that I can still see some of the details underneath it. And the third reason, especially for that, those little, you know, red and orange pages is so that those get some high contrast paint in kind of random application. Because it's open paint, all of that black that's on my table paper is still wet. 
so I tried to wipe it with a, a wipe. I don't know that it helped. And here are another three unfinished paintings. And you can see that I'm covering up a lot. I'm keeping some a few things out that I want to be able to see, but I am covering up a substantial amount of these marks from the old paintings. using a wooden stick to carve into that black a bit to show the colors underneath. And I tried different marks, lots of experimentation here. This is definitely not a video on here are things you should do, <laughs> here are marks you should make, but this is, this video is strictly about adding something to make something bold, see so something to react to. Let's be clear on that. Lots of experimentation here with marks and lots of covering it up again, as you, you will see. I'm using a brayer. Um, brayers leave their own unique texture. They can thin things out as well. You can see I'm offloading the brayer on that bottom page. I've realized as I was going through this process how long open paints take to dry. Typically when I use them, I use a very thin layer so it doesn't take all that long. If you use a decent layer, if you were applying with, oh, I don't know, a color shaper perhaps like I am here, it will take a substantial amount of time to dry. I used a hair dryer on these for a while after I filmed this. I ended up still leaving them out overnight to dry because it took so long. The ones where I did not use a brayer or where I did stripe so that the areas that the stripes, you know, the in between the stripes, those parts were a little bit thicker. It took a long time to dry. And the last three. I've organized these in the video with their, you know, partner paintings. <laughs> you can see that there were other ones that I liked better. So I had those in a different pile. These are all part of my, yeah, I don't know what else to do with this one pile. So working on them together, I'm still able to keep them cohesive within their group. And by the end of this, you know, really because I added so much black and the, the lines were so bold, the marks were so bold, I feel like all nine of these are their own body of work at this point. But they started off as three distinct groups. And one thing to notice, uh, I will show you how they all ended up at the end of my my session here working on these. I don't at all claim that these are all done. Um, when you see the images, I just want you to notice the transformation from the beginning to the end. I think when I get stuck, the biggest challenge is getting my guts together and making some bold moves. Once I've made the bold moves, it's easier to move on and it's easier to have something to react to. It's easier to make subtle changes after that that end up completing the piece. If you have pieces that are as unfinished as these were when I started and you only make subtle changes to them, you won't get, you won't end up with something that you're satisfied with. Again, that assumes you start off not liking what you've what you have so far. If you like what you have so far and you're stuck for the last little bits, then by all means, go slowly and don't paint the whole thing black. 
Um, this is for when you need a big change and you're not sure what to do and you're not sure where to go, but you know you're not happy with what you have so far. So whether you like the change that I've made or not, I think we can all agree that they are completely different, nine completely different paintings than they were at the start of this video. And that's what I'm, that's what I was after. So goal achieved, like them or don't like them. Now there's a lot to react to. Some of them I think are pretty close now to actually being done. Um, and some of them will need, you know, a good amount of work. However, I love that adding tons of black gives me a solid direction to where to go with this series and some pretty cool looking pieces. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit subscribe. I would love to have you uh, listen and watch the next videos. And I hope to see you all soon.